Hello everyone, bringing you a video today looking at a walk completed last weekend around the Derwent Valley where Ramsey, David and myself uh, went along in full Second World War kit, uh, loaded as accurately as possible uh, to give a proper weight. Um, we were also accompanied by Alan, my friend Alan, uh, Ramsey's wife Georgie and my wife Lucy. Uh, just a brief caveat on that, uh, Lucy and Georgie don't really appear in the introductory bit of filming I did at the time because they preferred not to appear in camera, just to uh, point out why that's the case. Um, we had a really good time, it was very good fun. Uh, the Derwent Valley is somewhat historically significant in a Second World War context because it's the, the location that the Dambusters, the 617 Squadron, used to uh, practice uh, their runs in preparation for the runs on the dams in Germany. Um, quite a famous piece of Second World War history there. Um, and it was a very interesting experience. Um, I basically loaded my web equipment, which we'll see a little bit more in detail of later in the video. I loaded my web equipment as per um, assault troops, so both mess tins filled with rations um, to roughly get the right sort of weight for that and carried a shovel as well. Uh, I'll detail the weights carried later in the video, but that's that's the introduction to this, so we'll get into it now and have a look at uh, some footage from the day. Filming, yes, and we have Mr. Pryor as well, who's in sensible clothing. So David, Ramsey, and myself, and we're about to, we're about to go and walk the, uh, the Derwent Dams. Yep. So uh, off we go. You can see the route of the march here, starting at the visitor centre, which is marked as the mountain bike centre here. Uh, and looping up around the Derwent and Howden Reservoirs. Where's the training videos you see are actually in your father. The first dam we come to is the Derwent Dam, which can be seen here with the following footage shot from the viewing point shown on the satellite view. So I'm afraid there's probably going to be quite a lot of wind noise on this, but never mind. Uh, this is the Derwent Reservoir, and you can see around to the side here the Derwent Dam, completed in 1916. And of course this is where uh, the dam busters make their practice runs along this valley, uh, quite famously. So uh, quite, a, quite a significant piece of World War II history uh, happened here. And he practice runs for the attacks on the dams in Germany. Um, but as I say, this is the uh, the Derwent Dam, the middle of the three reservoirs, and the dam above uh, Lady Bar. Here you can see the route continuing from this point up along the western shore of the Derwent Reservoir towards Howden Dam. The next dam reached is Howden, uh, named for the moor on which the Derwent River originates. So this is the Howden Reservoir, the top of the three. And you can see the Howden Dam here. And we'll be uh, heading up the end of the valley, up the Derwent River. We'll probably pause for lunch up there. So this is uh, one third of the way round, just over a quarter, something like that. This shows the route beyond this point to the top of the Howden Reservoir and a short distance up the valley beyond following the course of the Derwent River. Come on, turn to the right. Right, turn. Fire the first. Quick, march. Favorite bit, man, as well. Which bit's that? Uh, the bit where it suddenly gets clear and quiet. Oh yes, of course, yeah. yes. Yes, it's a shelter from the wind round here, isn't yeah. it? When this bit of woodland stops, and you just go. Yes. Technical turn that.
So we're at the halfway point now and Ramsey has discovered, well, seems a, bit, a modern conception of the oatmeal block, which is from Quakers? Quakers. Quakers. So if you're looking for the oatmeal block to go in your 24 hour ration, uh, you can get these and cut them down. Two inches by two inches they should be, but they're about the right thickness. Yeah, so there we are, we're going to try some of this. So this is the halfway point and this is a bridge that used to be in the village of the the Derwent Reservoir. Oh, Derwent Village. The Derwent, in Derwent Village, exactly. And it was moved here, where well, it was taken down, because um, I believe it's medieval. Yeah, I think it's 14th century. 14th century, and then it was rebuilt here in the 1950s. I think the war actually delayed its rebuilding somewhat. And it's now over the Derwent River, and this is the Der Derwent River Valley leading off up into the hills. So that's it, 10.3 uh, miles, um, not too bad, quite tired now, I will be honest. Um, I'm going to weigh what I was carrying at home, um, it's loaded as accurately as possible, um, but obviously the rounds and things in there don't, don't have any uh, powder or uh, actual round in them, no head. So um, yeah, it's, it's not quite full, fully accurate, but as close as I could get, and obviously carrying the shovel as well. Basically, assault troops load what assault troops would be carrying. So both mess tins filled with rations. Um, for the haversack filled essentially according to the haversack contents video, which I've already done. I'll put a card to that in the video. And uh, obviously helmet and everything else. I won't be wearing the helmet, boots and so forth. I'll just wear the uh, respirator haversack webbing and the shovel to uh, give you an idea of the weight being carried. So there it is, some serious uh, helmet hair in the last a uh, bit of footage there, that's what the liner of the Mark II helmet does to my hair. Uh, a really good weekend, or a really good day rather. Um, I really enjoyed the the experience, I have to say. It was nice doing it with some mates. Um, a bit strange, I know, just to go for a walk like that. No weapons carried, unfortunately, though we may do that in the future if we can get permission from Derbyshire Constabulary uh, to carry deactivated weapons. Um, we're hoping to do it with a larger group next time, so again, there'll be a video of that if that takes place. Um, the, As I say, the web equipment was loaded to be as as accurate as possible in terms of contents to give a, a close to accurate weight and the the end weights were 32 and a half pounds which is uh, 14 and three quarter kilograms so uh, you know two different weight measures there for you depending on what system you use uh, that's the shovel the web equipment and contents and the light anti-gas respirator in its haversack with the associated contents there so that's that's what was included in that weight uh, which wasn't too bad um, I felt it a bit by the end of the day because I'm not used to wearing ammo boots and so forth for a long, prolonged period. Um, I felt it in my legs, but was fine, could have carried on. Um, and I say from that point of view, it's a useful experience to, to know what it's like wearing the kit for a longer period than perhaps, and, and marching for a longer period than perhaps you get opportunity to at uh, organised events where you're doing a, a static display. So uh, that's it. To, that's what I wanted to cover in the video, basically. Uh, as usual, if you like this sort of content and you'd like to see more, then please do subscribe uh, if you haven't already and, and make sure you hit the little notification button, the little bell, which obviously notifies you when you upload future videos. Uh, there's also a Facebook and an Instagram page where those of you who follow me on there will have had prior knowledge of this upcoming video because I put some photographs of the march up on there as well. Um, so check out those pages, links in the description if you're interested. And uh, I will ne now leave you with a little bit of uh, sneak peek footage of an upcoming video that was also filmed on the day. So uh, until next time, bye for now.